getting online filler in the back alley. What could go wrong? Hi everybody, Dr. Anjana Pana here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So this year uh, we've been hearing some really, really interesting things that have been going on in our industry and I was actually, you know, I thought it didn't really happen here that much. It actually happens quite a bit in the UK where um, it, you could be anyone. You could be, um, I saw in someone's stories, uh, an accountant, uh, someone who does bricklaying. Uh, that is actually what's happening. Or, you know, the Love Island contestants are using medical devices like fillers and prescription drugs and injecting them into uh, patients or as they call them clients after a one or two day course and that is actually starting to happen here um, in our country so before you have any fillers done if you're a filler or aesthetic veteran in our practice we still go over this with you and every single time you come in you sign an um, informed consent um, and then if it's your first time we also go through a very extensive discussion on um, on fillers, the risks and the benefits. And I'm going to do that for you guys now, sort of the way we do it in practice, just to keep you informed. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about what's been happening before I do that. What has been happening more and more is that uh, people that are saying that their doctor's not sure if they are, um, they are trained out of the country and um, are buying fillers and sourcing products, um, possibly on online, or um, as grey products directly from uh, Europe and injecting uh, people and you know people may think this might be a cheap way to go or uh, a filler is a filler it's just a beauty treatment but this is an actual medical treatment and it's not always um, cheap I'll relay a story uh, to you with a patient that uh, does come or has come for other things and wanted those Russian lips yes we don't do Russian lips, we do full voluptuous lips, we do subtle structured lips, um, all of those things. But that Russian technique uh, where everything is like a vertical vent going right down through the mucosa is not something um, that I think is attractive or safe to do. So it's not something uh, I do. So, but if someone wants something and they see it, say on Instagram, they, you know, it's something they desire. So they think, okay, there's so many people having this done let me go have it done a particular person did go to this place and those people weren't doctors and the patient did know they were not doctors and they had some sort of Korean filler that is not approved um, in the country had the filler done and often what happens here at these places is like this is the amount it's actually as much as a um, uh, an aesthetic practitioner or um, aesthetic dentist, uh, plastic surgeon charges, it's just as much. And they, they say they keep a little bit for you. So when you come for a follow up, they'll do that touch up. So the, the, the first treatment was done in a month, um, going in for uh, the so-called touch up with the cap filler. And then the person's like, oh, you know what? This is not enough. I think you need another vial and you pay again. This happened three times. So it's not always cheaper, but I'm also grateful that it didn't have any lasting um, effects um, on the the patient it actually looked like nothing had been done thankfully because these things can go very wrong cases of uh, occlusion infection and filler that you are not able to dissolve if you are not happy with the result because you don't know what is in there so when we sit down with the patient and discuss the possible risks and benefits so when you have any sort of treatment done where there is a needle going into your skin it must be thoroughly thoroughly disinfected you come to the practice with no makeup on if you have makeup on your entire face is cleansed triple cleanse and then disinfected uh, because any sort of going into the skin creates an opening for infection so infection is something that we discuss as well as the treatment uh, for that swelling is a possibility so 
you're having a minimally invasive treatment, there's needles, there's a cannula, there's a foreign substance in there. So you will get some inflammation and swelling, a little bit of irritation and sensitivity at the site, especially if a significant amount of filler is injected, if it's injected onto the periosteum, definite, definite um, sensitivity. Tight areas like the chin, often the most uh, sensitive areas. Bruising is a possibility. Normal bruising as well as a hematoma if you are already on blood thin thinness. So a hematoma, a hematoma is basically what I, what I call, or I tell the patients like a swollen bruise. So if a blood vessel is popped and you are on a blood thinner, especially it grows, it becomes like a little ball and how to uh, stop that is to put an extreme amount of pressure massage pressure massage and ice and rest so you have to go to someone who knows what they're doing a medical professional so they know how to treat these complications the other things um, that can happen and that you should know is you know go going back to infections like fillers are um, you know they, it's like a sugar protein you know bacteria love it it's like food for them so it's really important to keep um, as an aseptic technique as possible and also not to have any other infections going. If you've got periodontal disease, like gum disease, if you've got, you're gonna go for a root canal, if you've got extensive dental work, if you have a UTI, uh, you should not be, that all must be resolved before you have um, any, any fillers done because that implant, the filler is there for a long time. I know back in the day when we started, they're like, yeah, you must, you know, do a retreat every six to 12 months. Filler lasts a really long time and there's even been an MRI of filler that was placed um, 12 years ago in the patient still being present. So different fillers um, and in different people um, break down at different times. So it doesn't mean that, you know, you had filler nine months ago, it's completely gone. There's probably still some filler in there. And how we check, we, we use an ultrasound. So that is also something um, that we tell the patients they have to be cognizant uh, of no wearing makeup um, after the treatment. The other side effect or possible complication are nodules. So nodules is like a collection of the product, often intramuscular. So that can be dissolved. So that is more like, sometimes it's like, yeah, like a technique related complication you also get delayed onset not nodules so say you may have had a immune response an autoimmune issue or something happened um, maybe a little bit of makeup or something wherever it was um, was inoculated into the site when you injected months later uh, or you've had a vaccine a months later you can get a delayed onset nodule or if it's dodgy product um, so that also has to be resolved um, you know uh, often with uh, cortisones and dissolving there's granuloma formation so granulomas can happen with hyaluronic acid fillers um, they are like the body's reaction to the foreign body which is the filler um, and it it makes a, a little like a little capsule around the filler. So generally, m most hyaluronic acid fillers have had some sort of granuloma uh, reported. And you must remember these millions and millions and millions of boxes of filler injected. So these complications, these serious ones that are granulomas that I'm talking about now are relatively rare. The other one that frightens us all uh, would be vascular occlusion. So this is what keeps injectors up at night. And there are some areas that are more prone to vascular occlusion uh, to mitigate vascular occlusion or compression because or irritation from the HA on the blood vessel. Um, certain techniques are used. Some people use cannulas. It is safer. It's not completely 100% safe. You can still cannulate a vessel and get filler into that vessel. So basically it's compromised blood supply uh, as a direct result of injecting the filler, whichever um, reason that's happening. And then um, it's usually resolved with uh, massage, aspirin. Main thing is hyaluronidase uh, injection that breaks down the filler into smaller particles and you have to track the filler because it goes proximal and it gets small and smaller and can get into the like tiny tiny capillaries 
days. So you also have to inject uh, hyaluronidase there. Most cases, if caught, like recognized in the chair, uh, resolved um, immediately. If you leave it or if you don't recognize it or if it manifests days later, which can happen, the patient will have no pain. So there's a possibility of something like that happening days later it can turn into necrosis or um, death of the, the the skin area, you get like pustules, so an infection um, and the skin sloughs off, uh, turns like gray, black, which is very, very scary. You have to go into like wound, um, like a wound uh, healing protocol, then uh, introduce some hyperbaric oxygen. And then something else that's also relatively rare. So thankfully we have never had any necrosis in the practice. Um, and that's the thing, like say you do go somewhere that is not uh, a medical practitioner, an aesthetic doctor, aesthetic dentist, plastic surgeon, dermatologist for your treatments um, that have the emergency equipment on hand that has uh, usually like a network of people to uh, refer to as well as the proper legit safe products um, to be used what is going to happen so uh, things like that you have to act fast time is very important in terms of vascular um, occlusion uh, the other scary thing that uh, is possible and i do tell the patients so we we tell them all of these things discuss it with them uh, chat stats so the other the other thing that can happen which is a type of vascular occlusion is blindness related to filler injection so uh, filler getting into the retinal artery causing blindness often it's filler injected into the glabella so i don't do glabella filler no matter how much a patient will beg me it's just not worth it that's the most uh, um, area i mean it can be anywhere it could be temple it could be lip it could be anywhere um but the areas that are most affected would be the glabella as well as uh, injecting um, the nose with filler. And it's a lot of filler injected very fast, really poor luck getting into those uh, blood vessels. It's tracking back into uh, to the retina and then you get blindness. Apparently there's been six reversals um, of this blindness. So there's been some papers written, but otherwise it's irreversible. Um, we did once go to a, uh, a lecture where it, it, I think it was v uh, Vietnam where they, they cannulated um, uh, the vessel under ultrasound and you know the vision was restored but it is something that we all fear but just to put it in perspective and how I put it into perspective for patients so there's been over 200 cases of blindness we talk about it almost at every single congress so 200 cases worldwide documented over 200 cases worldwide documented of this Initially, most of it was due to fat transfer. So fat transfer, fat is also a type of uh, volumizing filler. And then more recently, it's due to hyaluronic acid fillers. So if you look at the number, look at the areas and look at the places where it's most common, usually in Asia where they do a lot of nasal work, that's where a lot of the cases um, come from. Um, it puts it a little bit in perspective and also the amount of filler that is used worldwide so if you look at uh, galderma their particular range of fillers so far i know they were 20 years or something a, a while ago so by then it was 20 million boxes by now it's probably like 30 or 40 million boxes there's an, the elegant filler 50 million boxes there is the mertz hydro um uh, uh, calcium hydroxyapatite so up to now about 15 million boxes so and those are just like three of the the brands that I use there are 300 brands out there so millions and millions so it just puts it in perspective but it's something we always have to be aware um aware of treating and um if you do consult and if you discuss your options and have an informed consent um someone responsible would say no no, we should not do your nose. No, we should not put some filler in that line uh, for your frown. So th those are the important things about 
when you choose to do something for your face, this is your face. This is, um, you know, uh, it's your health, it's your safety, um, it's your investment, it's your your look. So, you know, I just advise people, be careful where you go. Um, don't do something because it looks trendy or, um, you know, it, it seems like lots of people are going there and you have like a sad before and an extremely snatched after due to photoshop and good lighting so please be careful out there guys if you have any questions about all the stuff i've been saying uh and not to you know this also when we go for these lectures also gets us a little down but it is a really nice relatively safe treatment to to get but you you must know um uh, what is safe and what is not if you have any questions drop them in the comments down below like share and subscribe bye